the weekend she died, she and a friend were camping down on the Appalachian Trail. And uh, she was going to be starting her new job, which was kind of a dream job for her. A double murder that happened far away that hits close to home in St. Cloud. What essentially happened was two uh, young women hiking in the Shenandoah were randomly targeted, identified, and, uh, and murdered uh, while camping on the trail. It was a horrific crime, a particularly grisly crime. It's been over 20 years since St. Cloud native Julie Williams and Lolly Winans of Unity, Maine were found murdered in the Virginia Park. The FBI is still looking for tips to find who's responsible. We're using this opportunity, uh, the 20-year anniversary, to let folks know that the case is still a pending FBI investigation and, uh, you know, we are looking for leads. We're looking for new evidence. There's somebody, somebody that knows something uh, and hopefully some relationship will change and somebody out there will feel the guilt or uh, come forward to do the right thing. Julie and Lolly were last seen alive on May 24, 1996, hiking with their dog at Shenandoah National Park, Virginia. Julie was born and raised in St. Cloud and graduated from Cathedral High School in 1990. This is a case that was enormously uh, emotional for our region and, frankly, for my agents and for this office. The folks that are assigned to it now were assigned to it decades ago. Julie had a passion for the outdoors, sports, and social justice. She and her best high school friend, Becky, won the state doubles title for Cathedral in tennis their senior year. Her friends, teachers, and family to this day say the horrific double murder is something they will never forget. This isn't the St. Cloud world that we all knew. Uh, this terrible thing had happened in a distant place, and it brought us uh, a dose of, of, of the world that we just didn't really couldn't relate to. We did get together once when uh, we were both in college and um, of course it was always good to see her but yeah when I finally got that news I of course was devastated that I you know we hadn't seen each other more throughout those years after after high school. Her father Tom says Julie got along with just about everyone and usually cared for others above herself. Yeah she did uh, with everybody it's been a lot of years uh, of course and you hold on to the memories. She was such an empathetic person that it was hard to see this happen. You know, I think of Julie or even just things that I do in my life now, and now I have a high school daughter myself, and just some of the things that she does with her friends and seeing, you know, kind of her relationships, it just kind of sometimes makes me reminisce about my high school days and my times of having a super close friend who I could go to for everything. Julie and Lolly met while studying in Minneapolis back in 1995. Both were experienced hikers, and the crime still chills the local FBI division that's been trying to crack the case. It's very unlikely that the person had, uh, the, the killer had identified these two victims and then just stopped their career of crime. So we are looking actively to... Um, uh, to, to do what we can to link this case to other cases. We are using new technologies to exploit the physical evidence in the case. Despite the ongoing search for answers, Tom does have a strong belief on who's behind the horrific crime. A man who's been out of prison now since 2011. To this day, Daryl David Rice is the primary suspect. He had been indicted at the time. There seemed to be a case breakthrough when authorities announced charges of capital murder against Daryl David Rice back in 2002. However, those charges were later dropped when hairs at the scene ended up matching a different person. Still, Tom believes Rice is likely the man who's responsible. I do believe that uh, had it not been a murder, a capital murder case, that he'd be convicted and put away now. That's how strongly I feel that he's a murderer. But let me say this, no one has been exonerated in this case. And so we are, we are, our aperture is wide open. We are looking at anyone that had any relationship to the events on the Shenandoah 20 years ago that took the lives of these two ladies. Before the charges were dropped, prosecutors said that Rice targeted Williams and Winans because of his hate of women and homosexuals. The FBI won't comment on specific suspects now, but the case is still being investigated as a hate crime. There's certainly some indication that they were targeted sort of pursuant to a, a, a hatred of the, their lifestyle or their choices. And that is something that was certainly covered in that press conference, and I think that's certainly how we still scope the case.
After hearing the horrible news, Tom visited the site where his daughter was killed. He says it was a beautiful area out east and that the tragedy tainted a tranquil scene. Part of that, I, I did want to see it was important to me to see where she died. And uh, so, you know, I, I was in the park, stayed in the park, uh, and uh, one of the cabins there, and had access to all of the people in the park that knew Julie and uh, that um, and that also uh, knew her story. A beautiful little area down by a stream and uh, that's where she died. Over 20 years later, Tom says he still hopes answers and closure are found. He also hopes the community will continue to talk about the good memories that Julie left behind. To talk to people, to say, you know, just that, that I remember this story about Julie, or why Julie would have laughed at that. I think uh, being in touch with the people uh, who have had a loss is very important. They certainly don't forget. The FBI is actively investigating and is specifically looking for someone who may have seen something at the Shenandoah National Park at the time of the double murder. Anyone with information on this case should contact the FBI Richmond Division. From St. Cloud, Dan DeBond, WJON.